Okay, so Vaya Kiroso on chapter 44, verse 21, And we'll, well, now where are we in the story? That Joseph is trying to imprison Benjamin, and Judah's very upset, and he's challenging Joseph uh, that you promised that you weren't going to do this. And if you do this, when my father doesn't see Benjamin coming back, he's going to die. So it says in chapter 4, verse 31, Vayakir Oso, ki enanar vames. And when he sees that Benjamin is not there, he's going to die. And, you, and your servants will have brought down my father in his old age to uh, in sorrow to the grave. But see what she says, Vayakir Oso, ki enanar vames. What happened and when he sees that Benjamin is missing, he's going to die. Aviv meets Saratov. He's going to he's going to die in his grief. Verse 32. Judah says, because your servant guaranteed the life of the young man. more from my father saying. In lo avieim anu elacha, if I do not bring him to you, mechatasi lo avi koayamim, and I will sin to my father all the days. Now this is, by the way, when we study this, we have to wonder what was it in Judah's speech that put Joseph over the top, and this could have been what put him over the top when he said that I guaranteed, that I guaranteed, I was the guarantor. Did you have a question, Shoshana? No. Barbara oh, Okay, perfect. It says that I was the guarantor for 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 Benjamin. That might have put Joseph over the top. Another question we were discussing yesterday when we were studying this was: Does Judah know when he gives this speech? Does he know that Joseph is really Joseph at this point? You have to read between the lines, and and you can imagine that if he knows that this is Joseph. And then all of a sudden he would be using these coup, these uh, uh, these key words, these key words to indicate to indicate who uh, you know like what he wants Joseph to hear. So so what does the Rashi say? Because I was the guarantor. If you say, well, why would I become the guarantor more than my brothers? They're all, they're all on the outside. But I bound myself up to be bound by a strong knot, to be banished in both worlds if I don't bring him back. Meaning to say, Judah is explaining why he's so upset. He says, because I have the most on the line. And when he says, Rashi is saying that it means when he, Judah says, I'll send to my father all the days. That means all the days, including the world to come. That's similar to the way all the days refers in the Haggadah. It could because it could have just said the days. But it means all the days is inclusive of another idea that's inclusive of the world to come. So the next Rashi, the next verse states, And Judah now says, let your servant, meaning himself, come in place of the lad as a servant to my Lord, and the, the young man will go back to his, with his brothers. That might have been what put Joseph over the top also. When he says, when he guarantor, guarantees his place and he says, I'll take his place. I'll take his place in, in prison. So there he's, so to speak, done complete repentance. Before he sold Joseph, and now he's willing to be imprisoned to, to save his brother. <laughs> Rabbi Sat says this is the first example 
true ends in Western literature? I, I, you know, I'm wondering if this is actually for repentance because he does do an action which indicates repentance, but full repentance would require him to apologize to Joseph. Well, according to the text, he doesn't really know yet. No, but afterwards, he should have apologized. Full repentance requires taking complete responsibility and he does change his ways. But full repentance would require him saying, I made a mistake in what I did, and I apologize to you. So, but it Ramon does- Ramon gives the example of, of a woman. Right. That she's so, forbidden. So so this this will be the same way. I, okay, very good point, yeah. I he's could have same, sold, he's, right. he's I could have sold situation. Benjamin. Yeah. Okay, we like this. We like this, Rabbi Yosef, that he's in the same situation and he doesn't make the, make the same mistake and he rises to the occasion. But it's not exactly the same situation because Benjamin was not hated by the brothers. Joseph was hated by the brothers. So... I mean, I have to imagine that there was probably, I mean, that Benjamin, since he was the most loved, and most loved but there was probably, maybe not hate, but there had to be some Bible you would imagine that because Joseph Jacob liked so Rachel, but right, right. But right. So there was that. But it never says that the brothers hated Joseph because they hated Joseph for two reasons. One, because he was favored by his father, but it's the text says that they hated him because of the dreams that he had. The pretensions of prominence over the brothers. But yes, this is the closest thing to full repentance. I agree with Rabbi Sachs. I don't know if Rabbi Sachs could talk about all of literature. I just know that in the Torah, where else do we see repentance? We don't really see it. Well, this right. he says, hey, this is the first time you see it here. He contrasts it with Greek and Roman literature where you don't see the same kind of stuff. Nice. That's the kind of thing that only Rabbi Sachs could do. Um, you know, he has, he has at his command, Rabbi Sachs, a blessed memory, has at his command not only rabbinic literature, but also Western literature, early Greek and Roman literature. Okay, so Yeh Shevna Abdechai says, let me take his place, I was, I'm, I'm better off than him. I'm better off than him for strength, for war, and for serving. Meaning to say, I'm stronger, I'm a... Uh, I'm a better soldier, and I also, I could be your servant, I could be your butler. Okay, very nice. How can I go to my father, Vanari Nenuiti, and the lad is no longer with me? How can I see the hardship that will befall my father? Verse 45. Joseph was unable to withhold himself. Joseph was unable to withhold himself for all those who were standing on top of him. He couldn't do it. Everybody was standing before him and he couldn't hold himself back. And he called out and said, get rid of everybody from on top of me. And no man was standing with Joseph when he was about to make himself known to his brothers. Why doesn't he want anybody with him? Is it because he wants to protect his brothers or because he doesn't want the Egyptians to know of his humble origins? But they knew he came out of prison. I think he didn't want them to see him weeping. He didn't want him to see him weak. Yeah, they didn't want to see him weak. So let's see what Rashi says. Let's see Rashi's approach to this verse. And then we'll take Jerry's question. One second. He didn't, he couldn't bear that the Egyptians would be standing there. He didn't want the Egyptians to hear that would embarrass his brothers when he makes themselves known. So Rashi's approach is, 
He's trying to defend the brothers from being humiliated that they sold him. You can imagine if Joseph was beloved then, one of the servants might have attacked the brothers to, to avenge the wrong that was done to Joseph. Well, he was, he was weeping at the reunion, at the reunion. All right, speaking of reunion, we have one of our dear friends just walked in, Barbara. So, um, uh, Jerry, you had a question. Uh, no, uh, it was, uh, no, uh, no question. Thank you. Okay. So the next verse states, So, so he lifts up his voice and cries. And the Egyptians heard, and the household of Pharaoh heard. So what's going on here? Let's see what Rashi says. Jerry, you had a question? Yes. If he spoke Hebrew to his brothers, uh, how could the servants understand Hebrew? Well, first of all, it's a good question. But right now, he's just crying. Crying is the universal language. Everybody would, could understand the cry. So, so let's see what happened. Let's see what Rashi says. The house of Paro, the house of Paro, but, but, Komar, it doesn't mean his actual, what does it mean? Avadav Bene Beto is his servants and the members of his household. It doesn't mean an actual house, a house came here. In French, the household, maisoned, maisoned. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Fine. Um, and Joseph says to his brothers, now this is a great one. This is one of the most powerful verses. Ani Yosef, Joseph says to his brothers, I'm Joseph. Is my father still alive? Joseph says to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? And the brothers could not answer him because they were nifalu. They were all shocked before him. She says, on account of the shame. Ah, so Steve asked a tremendous question. Steve asked a great question. Why is he asking if my father's still alive when they, the whole speech was about how you can do this, you cannot, you cannot keep Benjamin, it'll kill our father. And now, why is Joseph saying, Ha'od It's, uh, Steve has asked the- Maybe he didn't really believe it. Okay, so that's one answer. Then maybe he wanted to confirm and everything they were saying in the speech was accurate. That's one answer. That's one answer. Another answer, anybody can think of another answer to this classic question is that maybe he's saying, is my father still well? Meaning to say, is my father still well? But uh, another answer reads Joseph as really accusing them. You think my father wasn't going, is my father still alive after I, after you, or what you did to me? Did my father survive that? My father is still alive after what you did to me? Like an accusatory question. I'm Joseph. Is my father still alive after what you did to me? Meaning to say as an attack upon them. That's how some want to read it. Uh, you had a question, Jerry? Uh, yes. Uh, they could have said to him, why were you silent for the last 21 years? Yeah, why? but they were in shock. They were in shock because they were ashamed of what they've done. You know, in retrospect, you have a lot of, you have a lot of uh, comebacks, but they were just so overwhelmed with shame as, because of what they did. That's what Rashi says. Mimnea Busha, they were filled with shame at that moment. But it is a good question because why is he saying, is my father still alive? Now, uh, if the whole speech was my father still alive. 
why he didn't contact his father. Well, that's what Jerry said. Well, well, oh, Jerry said, why didn't he tell them? Why didn't he contact his father? So there's a lot of answers to that question. We were discussing this last week. We could say, first of all, maybe he thought his father was was a participant in him being sold. Maybe he was an unwinning co-conspirator, unnamed co-conspirator, in that he sent him to his brothers knowing what they were going to do. How does he know that his father didn't know? But an alternative answer is maybe he just uh, wanted the dreams to come true. That's what Nachmani says. He had, to, he had to channel the prophecies. Third answer is a lot of kids don't go home. They just get busy, and next thing you know, what? You know, he didn't want to blow his cover. He didn't want to say he was a Jew. There are a lot of people like who don't want to reveal that they're Jewish. They get into a position in power, and they don't want to reveal they're Jewish. Like, they pull a Madeline Albright. Remember that? She didn't say she was Jewish? Yes. She didn't, she didn't know. Sure, she didn't know. No, of course not. Of course she didn't know. No, no. How would she have known where she came from? How could she ever know? Who am I to say that she should have known? She knew. Come on. Let's go. Um, Jerry, yes. Yes, I think she knew. Yeah, Jerry, you had a... Uh, I was once... Um, okay, yes. What do we make of the idea that from Abraham on, uh, the our forefathers knew the Torah before it was a- actually given? And if so, what about the what about the mitzvah of kibbut avoim? Uh, if right, right. Uh, so, Joseph right. knew the Torah, he should yeah. have been in touch with his father earlier than. Uh, right, so that's the question. That's the question. Why didn't Joseph tell his father? Yeah, we've been discussing that, but it's a difficult question. The the, the probably the the. the Best answer from the perspective of religious piety is what Nachmanides says that Joseph felt he had a, a prophecy to, and it was his job to make sure that the dreams came true. So that's what he felt. But it, the best psychological answer is pretty mad at his death. Yeah, and the best psychological answer is that he was he was upset. He so he was upset. By the way, I only want to say it's not only Madeline Albright who I don't believe who hit her Judaism. There's a whole bunch of people. There's like a long history of. Jewish politician, uh, politicians who somehow forgot their Judaism. They didn't know. And my favorite is once there was a person who said, their mother said to him, we're Jewish. Do you still love me? Remember that? That was a senator that the mother said to him as she was dying, we're Jewish. Do you still love me? Tom says he didn't know that he was really Jewish till his 50s. And he's written a very important play about that. He has. I saw it. He yeah. has stuff. Well, I mean, I can believe about certain people, but I'm not going to believe it about a person whose whole life is in charge of 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 navigating identities and nas- and origins and and anyway. I remember one time I was speaking with uh, Walter Reich, and he told me he remembers being on the phone with he, he said the name of the person. The person kept him on the phone for an hour. This was a person from the head of the uh, like one of the people in the administration trying to convince him that Madeleine Albright really had no clue. <laughs> Come on. Come on! I wasn't born yesterday. By Yomer Yosef Elachiv, and Joseph says to his brothers, "Geshuna Eli, now you got you." Joseph says to his brothers, "Come close," and they came close. By Yomer Ani Yosef Achichem, I am Joseph, your brother. Hashem Achartem Otim Mitzrayim. I am Joseph, your brother. You sold me to Egypt. Rashi says, "Geshuna Eli, come close to me." Ra'a Osam Nesogim Lachor. He saw them. He saw them going backwards. Amar Achshav Achi Nechomim. He says, my brothers are ashamed. Karolam Beloshan Rakli called to them with a very soft language. I know you're going to, I know what you're going to say. I know exactly what you're going to say when I say this line. Vitachnunim, he called them, he spoke to them. Ve'eroam Shomo. He showed them his circumcision. So that he brought them close and showed them he was circumcised. Now I know what you're going to say. We saw this last week. We saw that Joseph told all the Egyptians they had to circumcise themselves. So what good is it that he's circumcised? Every Egyptian is circumcised. How is that a proof? But the brothers didn't know that. They must have known that. If every Egyptian knows that they were circumcised by now. They came oh. as strangers for, for merchandise. 
I mean, it wasn't a secret. Everybody in, in uh, Egypt was circumcised. You right. think that the brothers didn't know? Everybody, right. they didn't go to the bath that morning? <laughs> the mikvah. <laughs> They bought him as a merchandise. No, they they were probably ashamed because they, they had. Yeah, so no, but, but Rashi says last week that he circumcised, that Yosef at Sadiq said he made all the Egyptians circumcised. Oh, wait, I muted, I muted Judah. Hold on one second, Judah. How would they know he was Jewish? No, 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 but, but uh, what I was saying was. That, that the proof that he did to his brothers was that he was circumcised. I'm questioning whether it was a proof if everybody there was also circumcised. But anyway, I see what you're saying, Meyer. It's a good point. That I, and I see what uh, Rabbi Yosef is saying. And these are good points. But Judah, I cut you off. I literally muted you. He's terribly embarrassed. Here's his younger brother, and he wounds in the face because they treated him like dirt. And then here's his younger brother. He's like, you know, why, why do they treat him like, like a nothing? Selling them and, and over right, so you're saying Joseph himself was embarrassed. Oh, he was horribly embarrassed. Can you imagine a king there uh, and his younger brother for the first time hearing all this dirty laundry? It must have been he incredible. Has to kind of wrap his mind around it somehow. And the older brother loses face is not good in his hand. Amazing. Yeah, I'm Ju uh, thank you, Ramayer. And um, Judah, we cut you off. I'm sorry, you have to unmute yourself. I muted nah, you. I, wait, first of all, when they came to buy food. That, yeah, those guys had to be circumcised, not the family, I think, right? If you didn't come to well, buy food, you'd have to be circumcised. So but also, the, the, oh, so Judah the his, only the people who came to buy the food were circumcised. So she pays out of pockets. Yeah. Also, no, they have right. a history of culture, attention. also have a history of culture not being circumcised. And it probably was a busha for them to be circumcised. The whole world knew that no Egyptian gets circumcised. So you, you don't show uh, other people oh, the, the, the Jews now. It was a busha for them, I think, maybe. Nice to see you. It could be. I mean, it's, 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 these are good answers Judah's giving. Very good and answers. And if you want to get Judah. really technical, they didn't do prayer. Uh, I mean, okay, that there, Rabbi Yosef is giving a different answer, that there's a difference in the nature of the circumcision between Judah's circ Joseph's circumcision and the Egyptian circumcision. But the, all right, all right, all right. So it's hard. It's hard. What? Oh, so the Talmud tells us that that the um, the Jewish circumcision, they say, the Talmud says there's a law from Moses at Sinai. In addition to just cutting off the foreskin, you have to pull down the membrane. There will be a soft membrane that was still there. <laughs> you have to pull that down and, and remove it. And, and this is called the Priya. And what that did... Yeah, but that's only for a newborn. I don't think it's for adults. Yes, it would be because yeah. that would make it so that you can't reverse the circumcision. If you don't do that, you can actually do this process, which Jews were doing in Hellenistic times, or reversing. Yeah, it's, it's perfect for Hanukkah. That's exactly what. It's yeah. All right, my friends, we have to stop here. We have to pray. Oh wait, wait. Actually, wait. We have three minutes till we pray. Three pray more minutes. Or four forty-five. We have a couple of minutes. Wow. Geshmak. We have a geshmak. We have three more minutes. So the next verse states. It was a very robust conversation today. I'm going to, we have a, a nice clever on the Zoom and in the person, it's a really gishma. So what does the next verse state? The ne by the way, this was, uh, so the next verse states, um, he says, Joseph says to them right away, don't be upset, don't be sad. Don't let it be angry in your eyes. Don't be bad. Don't be upset that you saw me here. God sent me before you to sustain things. We, Rashi says, to be a supporter of life for you. This is almost a little bit uh, Christian. You know, he's like, in the sense of like, turn the other cheek. You know, like he doesn't want vengeance. He doesn't want, uh, doesn't want to, there's a mitzvah in the Torah to be a blood avenger. But Joseph here is, is saying, don't, don't, uh, it all worked out okay. I'm, don't be upset. Well, blood avenging is only if someone gets killed, right? I guess so, right. There's also prohibition against vengeance, but you're right, Judah. You're right. It's only if somebody gets killed, but here. Literally killed or metaphorically killed? Right. So, so Judas is correct that it's really only if somebody's 
the, the, the Torah is talking about where somebody gets literally killed. But kidnapping is also hard. Yeah, well, but by, accident, by accident, by accident. Right, somebody gets killed by accident. Well, let's say somebody gets killed. Uh, let's say somebody kills somebody else. I, that there is a responsibility for you to bring that person to justice. There's a responsibility for the relatives to make sure that justice is 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 it, it comes through. And so, what it says God sent me before you. So if Joseph thinks that he was on a mission for God, how can he? Right. Talk well, to uh, well Shoshana is correct. Shoshana is correct. Shoshana is correct. All right. We'll have to stop here, my friends. And God willing, we'll pick this up tomorrow. We're going to study tomorrow. Even though the government says tomorrow is a day off, it's not a day off from Torah. What is that?